Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial at www.audibletrial.com slash heroes, villains, and sidekicks. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Episode 44, Saint of Killers. Well, this week on the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick show, we'll be looking at one of the most powerful characters in DC's uh, Vertigo's most awesome 80s comic preacher that we've been doing a series on for the past uh, three or four weeks. I'm losing track because I'm writing these and I'm recording them and there's a bunch scheduled. So I'm not sure how many we already have up at this point, but I think it's three, maybe four. And if you're wondering who I'm talking about, I'm not talking about God. I'm not talking about Satan, uh, Jesse, or even Cassidy, right? Who's a vampire. Uh, and you can listen to those episodes in some of uh, the previous episodes. I think it's 40, 41, 42. I'm talking about the Saint of Killers, and I think the name says it all. Uh, he is the Saint of Killers. We'll look at this character in the Preacher comic, sort of what his arc is in the Preacher comic. We've touched on it quite a bit in some of the other podcasts we've done in this Preacher series, but uh, we'll also take a look, though. What we don't see in the Preacher comic is one of these great one-shots that was done uh, by Garth Ennis was written by him that really breaks down the origin of the scene of killers more so than it did in the preacher comic book. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. The origin of the saint of killers. Now the scene of killers plays a huge role in the comic. He actually appears in uh, 58 of the 66 uh, issues in the run. Uh, he, now he doesn't say a lot, but he lets his guns do the talking. And these aren't ordinary Walker Colts. These guns were forged from the swords of the angel of death himself. So, I mean, how does an ordinary mortal go from being a soldier, cowboy, and family man to one of the most powerful beings in all creation? Well, for starters, I mean, the saint of killers uh, was never really an ordinary man uh, to begin with. He was... He was a pretty much uh, what you see as the saint of killers, but just like mortal. <laughs> he was that mean, that much of a killer. This man, he took care of business. Now, like I said, the bulk of this origin comes from the saint of killers special. Now, there is some of his origin that we'll get from an angel later on. We'll talk about that. That wasn't in the special. That was in the actual Preacher comic. And we've talked about that a little bit but um, in other episodes. But we're going to really focus on the special because it really breaks down you know, how this man became the Saint of Killers. Now, the Saint of Killers was once a man. He was a man who fought during the Civil War and was known for being one of the most ruthless killers out there. I mean, he was feared and hated not only by Union soldiers, but also for his own side as well. I mean, this guy was brutal and, I mean, well known for his uh, ferociousness and bloodthirsty killing on the battlefield. Now, this was he was a bad man. He was filled with hate and death from the beginning. I mean, it is what fueled him. He wanted to do with nothing but you know, himself and killing. And, you know, that's pretty much it. That was his life. Um, at the end of the war, though, of course, what he did, what do you do when you're a, a bloodthirsty soldier and, a, and a, pretty much a mercenary as it is in your own army, you go ahead and you become sort of pretty much a bounty hunter. And he would travel the West being a bounty hunter, you know, capturing uh, and most likely killing, bringing them in dead. Uh, bad guys, but also uh, going forward and you know attacking Native Americans and and bringing in scalps for the bounty that you could get from the government at that time, which is obviously horrible. Uh, now, on one mission, uh, after he has killed a number of Native Americans for a bounty, he discovers that there's actually a woman that they had taken captive, and she's sort of hiding. She's terrified. Now, she's very happy when she sees uh, the saint. Now, I keep calling him the saint because we don't know his name. We never learn his name. So I'm just going to keep calling him the saint or the saint of killers. And after he saves, you know, he, she thinks, I'm saved, you know, but he doesn't really care. He said it was an accident. You know, she just happened to be there. He just happened to be there, whatever. He says he's going to town. She says, will you take me? And he says, hey, I'm going. Who cares? Whatever. We don't really see that he's sort of smitten with her or anything, but she sees, I guess, something in him. Now, the Saint of Killers uh, takes her back to town, 
since he's, like he said, going there in the first place. And when they get there, the girl goes and meets her brother. And he's shocked when he is told by her that she actually wants to leave and go with the Saint of Killers because she could see that he's a good man. You know, she doesn't really care for her brother anyway. And she wants to see if she can bring out that goodness, his true self. Now, (laughs) when she proposes this to the Saint, uh, he told her that she's, you know, she's wrong, that he's all about death and all about killing, and that's all he'll ever be. Now, of course, we jump forward after a pronouncement like that. We jump forward to see a nice little cabin on the prairie. And in one of the panels uh, in the next page, the saint is delivering their child. And it's there that the saint of killers realizes there is more to life than just death and killing. He, he was in love. You know, he had a family uh, for the first time. He had a child and he was happy. And, or as, you know, I guess as happy as a man like that can be. But, you know, if you're a parent, uh, you know, this happens, right? We talked about it a lot with the Tulip O'Hare uh, episode where her dad didn't want a girl. And the second he saw her, he, you know, lost his heart to her. It's the same thing with Jesse and his dad. This is a very much a story of families and fathers and relationships. So it was, you know, it was interesting that here is this man who is just darkness uh, all of a sudden brought into the light. Now, unfortunately, you know, we have to bring in some conflict or it's not a story, right? It happens. His wife and daughter get sick with fever. And medicine to help them was like a week's ride away. I mean, I always, whenever I hear these types of things, it always takes me aback that, you know, if you got a fever, if you got the flu, or if you had an uh, abscessed tooth and it got infected, you were going to probably die unless you had enough money to have medicine on hand or a doctor or were very lucky. So he doesn't want to leave, but he knows that if he doesn't leave, then they're going to die. So he sets out for the week's journey. When the scorching hot plains, are, he gets slowed down in this desert area by a blizzard. Yeah, yes, this is a blizzard, and there's going to be more on that later. But that blizzard didn't stop him, and the saint made it to Ratwater. I mean, what a name, right? Ratwater, where uh, the medicine was. Now, the blizzard did, however, divert some really bad men his way. Uh, Gumbo McCready. I mean, Ennis must have fun making up these names. Ratwater and Gumbo McCready. Uh, and his, uh, so McCready has got this crew of sadists and they land in Ratwater and start trouble immediately. Now, uh, Saint of Killers is in the saloon and while he's just sitting in their saloon, the saint is drawn on by one of the gunfighters in McCready's crew and he stands up and he kills the man handily. It was just a boy uh, that was kind of goaded into doing this. And he makes a fool out of McCready. Well, the saint uh, leaves with the medicine, but on his way home, he's ambushed by McCready's men who kill his horse and beat him within an inch of his life. And even this didn't stop him. The saint, he picked up the medicine and he started to walk back. But now the trip that should have lasted days took weeks, a week and a half, two weeks. And of course, when he finally reached home, he found his wife and child long dead being picked clean by crows. Now, this brings back everything that the saint was and more. His hatred and his need for revenge was off the charts and on a scale that would take him down the path to become the saint of killers. And this is interesting. This is where the character reminds me of probably, I mean, I love Westerns. And I know it's a modern Western, but the movie Unforgiven with Clint Eastwood is probably the most perfect of Western movies uh, and revenge movies. And the Saint of Killers very much reminds me of the character, and I'm blanking on his name. I've seen the movie a hundred times, but uh, it reminds me of the main characters uh, who had this horrible, horrible past and, and found love and then lost it and, you know, due to circumstances of his own creation, uh, ended up becoming the man he used to be. And the saint reminds me of this character in Unforgiven. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's an, it's an awesome, awesome Western. But let's get back to the saint of killers. So now he is hell-bent for revenge. And he travels back to Ratwater to take his revenge on McCready 
and he blasts his way through the entire town and then the saloon, ki- killing all of McCready's men. Now, McCready, fearing for his life and being a co- uh, uh, just a coward, takes hostage and he puts an innocent woman in front of him, you know, to block any shots. But he wasn't betting on the level of hatred in the saint's heart. Now, the saint shoots the woman, killing her. Uh, and, you know, pretty much at this point, this is what damns him to hell. If he already wasn't, killing an innocent person pretty much does it. And then, of course, he goes in for the kill and finishes off McCready. But he doesn't finish off McCready. He's about to when his weapon jams. And that's when McCready, seeing an opening, hits the saint uh, with a shovel and then actually uh, plunging the shovel through his chest, killing him. And of course, this sends the saint straight to hell. Now, the saint awoke to found, find the horse that had been killed uh, weeks earlier, his, ho- his horse there. And he hops on that horse and he rides towards hell with you know countless souls behind him that are all destined to burn. And as he passes through the gates, uh, souls were, you know, they're getting scooped up by demons, taken away, burned up. But when a demon tries to lay his hands on the saint, you know, the saint gives him that look, that scowl. And again, head over to uh, heroesvillainsandsidekicks.com. I've got a lot of pages here from these comics where you can just, if you haven't seen his face in the comics, if you only know him from the show, um, go and take a look at those drawings because he is stone-faced and just angry. And when he gives one of those stone face looks to this demon, this demon just backs away. Now, as the saint travels through the fires of hell, his the coal in his heart, the cold in his veins, the hatred actually starts to freeze the actual fires of hell, putting them out. Now, this gets the attention of Satan, who at the time Um, is playing card games with the angel of death. Now, the angel of death was complaining because he didn't like his gig. In fact, he hated it. Uh, He didn't ask for it. You know, know, he was just told, you are now the angel of death from God. And he's really, you know, he is not enamored with the gig, going around picking up dead souls, killing when the Lord tells him to, not liking it. And it's kind of at that moment where Satan realizes that uh, something is definitely wrong in hell. Uh, It's cold. Now, when Satan finds uh, the saint, he grabs him and he tells him to stop what he's doing and to, you know, get rid of the hate in his heart so hell can be destroyed or restored. See, when most people end up in hell, all that stuff is burned away. Their whole sense of self is burned away, apparently. But the saint's level of hatred just keeps all of that in. And he's pretty much who he was up top. Now, the saint looks at him and asks, you know, like, who who are you to ask me that? Now, the, the saint, of course, is pissed. This, he is Satan. He runs hell. And he, of course, begins to torture the saint. Pretty much like he ties him to this, uh, I guess it's a tree. I don't know why a tree is in hell. but And he uses a whip and pretty much strips the flesh from his body. Now, the angel of death arrives, and it's then that the saint tells Satan why he's there and why he can't let go of this, because he has unfinished, and he wants only to kill, 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 and wants revenge. Now, the angel of death hears this as an opportunity to get out of the job that he has. He doesn't want, right? So he tells the uh, saint of killers that if he takes over his job, he can leave hell and take his revenge. And of course, uh, he does. The saint of killers says he'll do it. Now, once he takes over the job, uh, things have to happen. <laughs> the Satan actually has to um, rebuild his body because it was ripped up. So that's also why he looks, you know, a little maybe bigger than he should be and Because, you know, Satan's there with a needle and thread trying to put this body back together. He says he's used to ripping them apart, not putting them back together. So that's kind of funny. Now, while he's doing that, the angel of death is fashioning some weapons more his style. He uses his swords of uh, death, the death, you know, death swords, I guess, fashions these walker colts that they never run out of ammo. 
They will always hit what he's aiming for, his mark, and they will kill anything they hit, period. Now, he's told that now that he is the saint of killers, he's the angel of death, he can go take his revenge, but after that, he has to go to this, I guess it's like a cavern under Boot Hill and sleep. And while his body sleeps, his shadow will travel the earth collecting souls that were done in by violence and either send them to heaven or hell. So that's interesting because I had forgotten that, that the saint of killers, yes, he is the angel of death, but he doesn't just walk around earth doing this job. His, his soul, his, his you know, uh, shadow does all this while his body sleeps. Now, uh, he also was told that God at some point and during along the line might say, uh, actually, wake up. I need you to go up to earth and kill a whole lot of people, which is an odd thing, but you know, that's, that's how it is. So here he is. He has his, uh, mission. He has his guns and he leaves hell. And when the saint was leaving hell, uh, the fires of course start to come back on and the devil yells, you know, good, you know, I'm quoting here, good riddance, you cold hearted son of a bee. Of course, he swears. And this was a mistake because he makes his face uh, like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. The saint uh, turns, draws his weapon, and kills Satan. Now, the angel of death, I should say the previous angel of death, starts to mouth off like, oh, my God, you shouldn't have done that. Do you know what you've done? And as he's about to do it, he cocks his gun. And then the angel of death pretty much you know, kneels on the ground, wets his pants and begs for forgiveness. And, and he's actually spared. So the first person, the first entity that the saint of killers kills once he takes on that mantle is Satan himself. And it's then, if you're reading this book, you know what this man is capable of. He killed the devil. And, uh, that pretty much starts him on the next path in his life. Now a word from our sponsor. For you, the listeners of the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick show, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with free 30-day trial to give you an opportunity to check out all the awesome books they have in their collection. Now, again, I love to read, but I also have a huge, not huge, I mean, it's a 45-minute commute, and uh, I like to listen to books. You know, a lot of podcasts, of course, but a lot of books. Actually, my favorite podcast I've just been listening to right now is one called Mogul. Take it out if you haven't listened. Check it out if you haven't listened to it. It's fantastic. But when I'm done with that season, which I've got one issue left or one episode left, I'm going to start listening to Ready Player One. Now, I read it a long time ago, and I'm really looking forward to at least listening to it again because I, like I said, I haven't, I'm forgetting things. And this was, um, this is uh, on Audible, and you can pick that as one of your free books. It's actually narrated by Will Wheaton from uh, Star Trek Next Generation, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's 15 hours, 46 minutes. You can go over there and get it for free, uh, no obligation. So go over and check that out. Uh, again, Ready Player One or whatever else you want, maybe some Zane Gray since we're talking about a Western. But uh, to do that, just go over to audibletrial.com, Heroes, Villains, and Sidekicks. Again, that's audibletrial.com, Heroes, Villains, and Sidekicks for your free audiobook today. Now back to the show. Now, the saint sets off back to Ratwater for his revenge. Now, again, he is the saint of killers at this point. He has, you know, more power than pretty much. He killed, as we heard before the break, he killed Satan. So he is pretty powerful. And when he gets to town, his hatred is so great that he doesn't just kill McCready. He kills everybody. He kills everybody in that town. Women, children. Uh, any innocent, everybody. He kills them all. And then, of course, he kills McCready. McCready. And after that, he goes to Boot Hill and rests until he's needed again. Now, apparently, as it mentions in the in this special, he is called up a few times by God to kill. And now all this happens again in the, in the special. And it's not until we get to Preacher where we see how the saint is called up 
and uh, to go after Jesse. Now, we've touched on the saint in some of the previous episodes in the Preacher series. The And, and through the book, the, sh- the uh, saint of killer's shadow looms pretty large. We talk, him in, uh, talk about him in episode f- uh, 40 on Jesse Custer, uh, episode 41 on Cassidy, episode 42 on Tulip. Uh, and we'll be talking about him when we talk, when we do the Genesis episode, when we do the Hair Star episode, when we do the... Um, grail episode. We'll be talking about him a lot. So he has got a pretty large swath through there. And again, I think I mentioned he goes through, what is it? 58 issues in the comic. And that's, that's quite a bit. Man doesn't say a lot, but he's, he's in there. He does the, right. He lets the weapons do his talking. So when we first meet the Saint of Killers in Preacher, he's uh, being let out of his casket under Boot Hill and he is given the job to track down and kill Preacher, or to get rid of the entity, the Genesis entity, in Preacher. And when he does this, uh, when th- this angel opens this lid, he gives them the message, and then the you know Saint of Killers promptly shoots the angel by blowing his face off. And I think he is, at that point, no, I don't think he is the first entity slash human, whatever, this angel, that of hundreds of and hundreds <laughs> that the saint will kill through this series. And if you've been over to the site, over to the heroes, villains, and sidekicks.com, you can see how the late great Steve Dillon draws people getting shot and blown away. It's kind of like he did in, pre- in um, The Punisher, but even gorier. I mean, it is very, very gory. Uh, and probably some of the most graphic sort of gunshot victim-y kind of shoot up things I've ever seen, but also cartoony at the same time. And I think it has to do with the expressions he draws on their face, especially in St. of Killers. They're just so surprised. Uh, it is, it's really it's really odd. So head over to the site, heroes, villains, and sidekicks.com and check that out. Now, the saint then starts to track Preacher uh, down, killing everyone in his path. Uh, one of my favorite interactions between preacher and the saint is when they first meet. Now, we've talked about this again in the preacher episode. This is when there is gunfire going on everywhere. You've got uh, Arseface's dad, the sheriff, and everyone's fighting and screaming and yelling, and they're going to shoot, and the saint comes up, and everything's just going crazy. And of course, Jesse yells, uh, enough. And that's my, the next panel is so cool because the saint has his hand on his gun, but he can't, it's almost, and he's got this look like, did that just happen? You know, did I, I just stopped. He made me stop. And he, Jesse looks at him and just says back in that holster, you know, and he swears. Uh, And the saint just shoots him a look like, and he is super pissed that his hand was stopped. It's probably the only time in history that his hand was stopped since he was the saint. And then Jesse says, yeah, you heard me right. So this is when we know and we find out that the word uh, works on the saint, which makes sense. I mean, if the word uh, from Genesis is equal or greater than that of God's, it should work on the saint. And now we'll talk about the show a little bit. This is one of the things that I didn't care for on the show. Now, we have now met, uh, I'm caught up, we met the Saint of Killers, and when Jesse tells him to stop uh, on the show, he just keeps shooting and coming at him. And I'm sure they'll have the reasons, and maybe they'll change it, I don't know. I just, I loved that panel in the comic, and I was so hoping to see it just in real life. Again, I'm not one of those ones like, they ruined it, the show ruined it, because guess what? The comics exist. And I just read them when I want. Now, throughout the comic, the saint tracks Jesse. He's he's drawn to him. I'm sure it's some kind of mystical power. In the show, it's whenever he uses the word. When so, when on the AMC show, when Jesse uses the word, it helps the saint track him. Maybe that's the way it was in the comic as well, but it never mentions that. I mean, the saint even follows Jesse to France when Jesse, Jesse goes to France to confront the Grail right there on their home territory, the saint hops a freighter, kills the crew, and heads to France. 
Now, when he storms the grail, when the saint storms the grail, you know, he does this in his usual stone-faced killing spree method, going through men until he confronts Custer. And here's the thing, though. Jesse, tell, when, just when you think, well, he's going to die or he's going to use the word, how's he going to get out of this? Jesse tells the saint that he has access to an angel, and we talked about this in other episodes, who's right in the other room, and this angel has information or can help him access information from the um, genesis that's in his head on what really happened to the saint's family. Now, the saint says fever took him, but Jesse says, no, there's more. And, you know, now that now that the saint isn't beholden to God anymore, so God commanded the saint of killers. God has retired. God has left. Therefore, the saint can do what he wants. And not beholden to God anymore, he decides he's going to let this play out, let Custer go, and, and find out what happened to his family. Now, we don't really know a lot about what's going on with the saint at this point, uh, where he's going on, what he's doing. Uh, yes, he's in a lot of episodes, but it might be a little panel here and there. So when he is free to do what he wants to do, what's he doing? We don't know. But of course, as we come to the end of the series, and uh, Jesse has this information for the saint, he they are both sort of drawn to Ratwater, where it all starts. And it's there that Jesse tells him what happened to his family. And the truth is that God... Uh, created that storm, God put McCready in his path and caused his family to die. And now when the saint hears this, he is all in. It's also at this point that that using sort of channeling through Genesis to get some more information and and sort of I think he I think he touched um, the saint, he realizes what the saint is and how much power he has and the hatred in him. And when he finds out what the saint is and what he can do, he's like, well, then let's use you by God. And they do. They, they form a plan and the saint is all in. And he is at that point, of course, gunning for God. Now, at that point, they both still can't find God because he has shielded himself from everyone because he fears Genesis. But Jesse knows that if you know, Genesis would leave his body if Genesis would be killed or would be discomporiated. Um, I don't even think that's a word, discomporiated. I'm trying to think of a word and it isn't disincorporated uh, from him and it would leave his body that God would show himself. And of course, that's what happens. Uh, if you haven't heard the episode on Jesse Custer, listen to that one. But Jesse is killed and that releases Genesis. And once Genesis is gone and free and on its own or dead, God returns to heaven, returns to his throne room, just sort of waltzes in and finds a lot of dead angels everywhere, like all of the angels in heaven, dead. When he walks in his throne room, who's waiting for him but the saint, waiting there with his walker colts that were forged from the angel of death's sword. Now, God begs for his life, says he'll give you know, this, the usual thing a coward does, says, I'll give you anything, anything. What do you want? And the saint just kills him. He shoots God right through the head and God is dead. And at that point, the saint just goes and sits on God's throne, tips his hat over his eyes and sleeps. Now, we don't know for how long. We don't know if that was it. He can finally rest. We don't know if the saint of killers is the new God. It's an interesting thing. There are no angels in heaven. There are, uh, Satan is dead. I'm sure somebody's taken over by then. But here we go. We've got the saint of killers sitting on God's throne. I'm assuming he just died and let himself rest because there's no one there to wake him up anymore. But you never know. You never know. Maybe Genesis comes back and wakes him up. I don't know. Now, like I said, I finally got to catch up on the AMC show Preacher, and I love it. And while we just got to meet the Saint of Killers uh, on the small screen, and as usual with this show to me, the casting is perfect. The Saint is portrayed by uh, Gavin McTavish, I believe he's Scottish, and he really just nails it. I mean, yes, the Saint isn't much on words. I think he's talked more on the show, though, than he ever talked in the comic. 
So, but even in the show, he doesn't talk a lot. And the actor really needs to sell it with you know body language and pres- presence. And McCavish pulls it off. He's a big he's a big guy, and he pulls it off. It's just fantastic to see. Now, again, the one thing that I don't care for, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't seem that the word works on him, and I think it should. Not just because it did in the comic, but because Genesis in power is equal to that or greater than God. So he should be able to control him, control the saint. Now, again, maybe they're going to do something different. Uh, We'll see. I don't know. Uh, Controlling the saint probably isn't a great idea as it is. Uh, He tends to blow very large holes in you if you piss him off. So maybe Jesse doesn't doesn't want to be anywhere near him. However, I think on the show, like they did on the comic, the saint of killers and Jesse will meet up many more times. Well, I want to thank you for listening to this latest episode in the Preacher series on the Saint of Killers. Again, this has been a great series, a fun series. If you have any more ideas for series, head over to the Facebook group or the site and just leave a comment. Again, if you head over to the site, heroesvillainsandsidekicks.com, on the episodes page, there is a post for every show we've done. And on that show, there is uh, a lot of copy for, that I'm sort of saying here in the podcast. There's some transcripts, I guess you'd call them copy, and a lot of comic book images and clips, especially comic book pages of uh, what we're talking about. So if you head over there for this episode, you'll see all those pages of the, the scowls of the saint and the, the shooting and the, the blood and the gore. You'll see it all. And of course, some clips from the AMC show. Now, you can also, if you get a chance, of course, head over to iTunes and leave a review. Uh, Reviews help us move up the rankings, let people know about us. Uh, It would be greatly appreciated if we can get some more reviews. And if you also want to leave some comments on the actual episodes page on, you know, what you liked about the episode, what we could do to make our episodes better uh, for your listening experience, and or if you just have a comment about um, maybe what you thought about uh, the way that the Saint of Killers is being betrayed on the show. Now, the theme music was done by Broke for Free. You can learn more about that over at the site, the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick Show.com. And next week, we are going to be doing an episode in this series on the thing, the entity that started it all. It's going to be on Genesis. And this is going to be a fun one because it sort of has some long tail roots back to another one of my favorite Vertigo titles, Hellblazer. So I want to thank you again for listening to this episode. I'm Kevin Volo. This is the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick Show. We'll be back next week with more. Take care. Take care.